Hi everyone, and today I'm covering a lens I've had a lot of requests to review, the Tamron 150-600mm f5-6.3 DI VC USD G2 edition, a super telephoto lens for Canon EF, Nikon F, and Sony A mount digital SLR cameras, full frame and APS-C. It can also be mounted onto mirrorless cameras of course, with the right adapter. This is the third 150-600mm lens I've tested so far, and at a cost of £1,000 or US$1,200, it's on a pricey side of things, but like all of Tamron's G2 lenses, it's aimed at professional users. I'd like to thank Tamron's UK distributor for loaning me this lens for a couple of weeks for testing, although as usual, this is a totally independent review. I also requested a loan of one of Tamron's latest model 1.4x teleconverters to go with it, just to make my testing all the more challenging. The teleconverter is compatible with a number of Tamron's lenses and gives you 1.4x extra reach, so it can take you to 840mm. You lose a stop of aperture though, so at 840mm, this lens's maximum aperture goes down to a dark f9. My digital SLR camera, a Canon 6D, did not even try to autofocus through the viewfinder with the teleconverter attached. There's just too little light for phase detection autofocus to work here, although the lens did autofocus for me in live view mode, albeit a bit slowly. The teleconverter is about £450 or US dollars so it's an expensive option. Its build quality is absolutely rock solid though for what it's worth, cast out of strong metal, working great and looking gorgeous. We'll see how using it affects image quality a little later on. You can also get a 2 times teleconverter from Tamron and other manufacturers, but most people find that the effect on image quality with those is a bit too much. Anyway, back to the 150-600mm G2 lens itself. That zoom range is telephoto all the way and gives you a simply amazing reach, making this lens really versatile. And here it is with the teleconverter attached, the low resolution on this shot is because I'm shooting through a window here, sorry about that. It's an awesome lens to take to your local wildlife park, or for landscape shooting, and even portraits, despite the dark maximum aperture of f5 at the wide end to f6.3 at 600mm, if you're zooming in from far away, then you can get very strongly compressed backgrounds. If you're shooting with an APS-C camera, then you're getting the full frame equivalent of a 240 to 960mm lens, with the full frame equivalent depth of field of about f8 to f10 so even better if you want some extreme telephoto pictures. Let's look at the build quality first. I can tell you right now, it's really excellent. It's made of strong metal and feels very solid, and at 2kg it's pretty heavy too. The metal lens mount has a weather sealing gasket around the edge, that's followed by the focus ring, which can be turned anytime and works very smoothly and precisely. The autofocus motor is very quiet and very fast at 150mm. Zoom in and it slows down to maintain accuracy, and it seemed to work consistently accurately in my tests. You may need to do some micro adjustment on your camera for best results though. The zoom ring also turns very nice and smoothly. It can be locked in place at 150mm with a hard lock, or if you push the whole zoom ring upwards, you can friction lock it to any place along the zoom range, a neat feature. It's rubberized as well as the whole end of the lens, so you can zoom by pushing and pulling the end of the lens if you really want to. A very important feature of this lens is image stabilization. Here's some footage at 600mm with the stabilization turned off, and now turned on, to mode 1, which I found to be the most effective. Except for the odd jitter, the lens is managing to keep the image very still, even at 600mm. This is a seriously impressive performance, miles better than Tamron's previous 150-600mm lens, and also a lot better than Sigma's contemporary 150-600mm lens. And this was the performance without any tweaking of the settings with Tamron's tap-in console. 
The lens has a 95mm filter diameter and it comes with a deep, plasticky looking lens hood. Overall, the build quality of this Tamron G2 lens is just about top notch, really professional, and I loved its class leading image stabilization, which also worked well with the 1.4x teleconverter. Alright, image quality. I'll test it on three different cameras, feel free to skip ahead to the one that's most relevant to you by looking at where we are at the top of the screen. We'll start on a lower resolution full frame camera, my 20 megapixel Canon 6D. At 150mm and f5, the lens is pretty sharp in the middle and just good in the corners. Stop down to f8 for more contrast and resolution through the zoom range, and even f11 and f16 look very good. Zoom in to 300mm and it's basically the same story, sharp in the middle at the widest aperture and a little softer in the corners, but stop down to f8 through to f16 for some very good resolution. Zoom in again to 450mm and I found the lens to be a bit sharper here. From f6.3 in the middle of the image into the corners, we see very good resolution and it stays this good down to f11. Let's zoom all the way in now to 600mm. The lens is slightly softer in the middle of the image now at f6.3 and the corners are weak. Stop down to f8 for a small improvement in those corners. Well, actually, at 600mm my copy of the lens had a slight centering issue and was sharper on the left hand side. f11 is about the same. And finally, let's fit on a 1.4x teleconverter in case that's something you want to buy to go with the lens. In the middle of the image, at the new maximum aperture of f9, the image quality seems about the same as it was at 600mm in the middle and into the corners. There's no improvements top down to f11 or f16, I'm afraid. So, the lens isn't breaking any resolution records, but it's consistently good throughout the zoom range. I hoped for just a little better at 600mm though. The teleconverter didn't really affect image quality much though, so if you're using a lower resolution full frame camera, then it's clearly a good option for getting extra reach. Alright then, let's really challenge the lens now with my 42 megapixel full frame camera. I've adapted it on to my Sony a7R2. At 150mm and f5, image quality is very good in the middle. Corners are a little soft with a little chromatic aberration. The image is nicely sharper at f8 and at f11 we see pretty nice image quality. Let's zoom into 300mm. The higher resolution sensor reveals an improvement in image quality here. At f5.6, the lens is nice and sharp in the middle, and the corners are quite good too, without any chromatic aberration now. f8 and f11 are both really excellent. Let's zoom in again to 450mm. The image is excellent in the middle again from f6.3. Over in the corners we see quite good contrast and resolution, but chromatic aberration is intruding here a little. It's about the same at f8, but f11 looks a little punchier. Now let's zoom in to 600mm. f6.3 remains nice and sharp in the middle of the image. The right hand corner looks a bit rough here, with strong chromatic aberration. The left hand corner is much sharper though, and f8 and f11 see very tiny improvements. And finally, if you buy and use the 1.4x teleconverter, well, let's see. The middle of the image at the new maximum aperture of f9 is a little softer but still usable. The corners look a bit soft, and the chromatic aberration is pretty strong now. There's only a tiny improvement at f11, and no improvement at f16, although the middle of the image is slightly sharper now than it was at f9. Overall, the 42 megapixel camera shows the teleconverter taking more of a toll on image quality, as you'd expect, but the extra reach it gives you is probably an overall benefit, just about, if you're keen to shoot anything that's really far away. And finally, let's now mount the lens onto 24 megapixel APS-C camera, my Canon EOS M3. At 150mm and f5, the lens is slightly soft in the middle with lower contrast, but the corners aren't any worse, and there's no sign of that pesky chromatic aberration. 
F8 though, and F11 look really nice and sharp across the whole image frame. Let's zoom into 300mm. It's the same story, the lens is slightly soft at f5.6 from the middle and into the corners. At f8 and f11 though, there are very good improvements from those corners and back into the middle. Let's zoom in to 450mm now. At f6.3, we see good sharpness in the middle of the image. The corners are softer with some chromatic aberration. f8 and f11 are basically the same. Let's zoom all the way in now to 600mm. At f6.3, the image quality is just ok. The left hand corner again was slightly sharper than the right and image quality there is just about usable. It's about the same at f8 and f11, although if you do stop down, the image quality in the middle is a little better here. And finally, let's attach that 1.4x teleconverter. At f9, the high resolution APS-C camera is just pushing the lens too far and we get a soft image in the middle and into the corners. If you stop down to f11 or f16, you don't get any real improvement. So overall, the Tamron 150-600mm G2 is quite a good lens on APS-C, in some places very good, but it's not the sharpest option when you zoom all the way in. The teleconverter pushes things a bit too far on APS-C as we just saw, when attached to this particular lens, it's most effective on full frame cameras. Wow, that took quite some testing, let's move on now and look at distortion and vignetting on a full frame camera. On this lens, throughout the zoom range, you will see just a little pin cushion distortion. At 150mm, there's a little vignetting at f5, stop down to f8 and the corners brighten up again. As you zoom in, say to 300mm, the vignetting gradually gets a little worse. At 600mm, the corners are noticeably dark, stop down to f8 though for an improvement. If you zoom all the way in on this lens to 600mm, then you can focus as closely as about 2.2 meters, which actually brings you quite close to a smaller subject. At f6.3, on a 42 megapixel camera, the close up image quality is a bit ghostly. Stop down to f8 for much more sharpness and contrast, and f11 is slightly sharper again. Now let's see how the lens works against bright lights. Here we see some flaring, but contrast remains quite good, so no serious problems here. Finally, bokeh. Zoomed right in, you will see some nicely out of focus backgrounds, and they always look pretty soft to me. Good stuff. So, overall, the Tamron 150-600mm G2 is a really nice super telephoto lens. I was more impressed with its build quality than with its image quality. The lens is really tough, handling nicely, and its image stabilisation is out of this world, considerably better than the competition. If you are using a full frame camera, then Tamron's 1.4x teleconverter can really help give you some extra reach, if used with care, and of course if you are willing to pay for it. I was hoping to get a bit more sharpness out of the lens overall, although you should bear in mind that super telephoto lenses can sometimes have a few issues with sample variation and decentering when zoomed right in. Anyway, if you're looking for a super telephoto lens with the best build quality and the best image stabilisation and pretty good image quality, then this is definitely the one for you.